What's up? I'm Colin from Render Effects, and this is how to create the energy blast effect in Final Cut Pro. What's up, guys? It's Colin from Render Effects, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create the energy blast effect in Final Cut Pro. Let's get started. Once you have your shot filmed where your subject pretends to hold an energy ball and then goes ahead and shoots it, it's time to hop into Final Cut. Once your shot's in the timeline, head down to the link in the description. That'll take you to Footage Crate where we're going to find our free assets for this shot. Just create a free account and you'll be able to download the composites. So in Footage Crate, go to the Magic Powers tab, and then go down to the Spells and Beams, and now uncheck the Preview Pro Content box because that way we'll be able now to see only the assets that we are able to download. So the first one we're gonna download is this Looping Red Witch Energy Ball 1. So click download on that one. And then go ahead and scroll down and go to Magic Spell 9. So I'm gonna download that. Now, once both of those are downloaded, drag the Red Witch Energy Ball 1 on top of your shot in the timeline. Now, once it's in the timeline, hold down Option and click and drag and I'll duplicate it. We're gonna do that across the entire shot so it covers all of the shot where you need the energy ball to be seen. Once that's done, highlight all of the energy balls and press Option G. This is gonna make it a compound clip. This will make it so we can edit all of them at once. So once it's a compound clip, go to the Transform tab and scale it down and reposition it so that the energy ball is in between the hands. So I'm gonna go up here and zoom in so I can get the size to exactly where I want it to be. So now it's time to track it to the hand. So my method of tracking this ball to the hand is gonna be tracking it to my bottom hand in the shot. That way the ball will look like it's floating in between the hands. I'm picking the bottom hand because it's the most consistent throughout the shot but it can be the top or bottom. Head to the tracker tab, and I'm gonna resize this tracker onto the bottom hand. So I'm gonna put the middle on the hand and then scale it down. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the tracker settings real quick first and uncheck rotation. So it's just position checked, and I'm gonna analyze. So now let's see what happens with, with the track over the hand. So it looks like it got messed up. Let's see, in the beginning, it. Looks like it's great right up until the movement and then as you can see right here it gets a little lost and then it jumps around a bit. My method of fixing this is going to be just keyframing the position of the energy ball manually. So we can keep the track and now just use the, the track information uh, paired with the regular position transforms to uh, fix it and I'll show you exactly how I do that. So about right here where it goes off. I'm going to add a keyframe to position right up here. And now I'm going to go frame by frame. I'm going to go forward a couple frames. Let me zoom in so we can see it a bit better. And move the energy ball in between the hands for this frame. So there we go. It's still between the hands. We're going to go a couple more frames forward. And right about here, I'm going to add another keyframe right before it goes off. And then as you can see over here, it's not in the right position. So I'm just going to move it manually again and just make sure over these frames it's good. So once again, it's going off right here. Couple frames forward and keep moving the position. And obviously you won't need to do any of this if the track works out on the first time. There seems to be some quick movements right here. So it's time to change the blend mode and the colors. So first I'm gonna change the blend mode of the energy ball to screen. This is gonna blend it in with the shot. So as you can see, that looks a bit better now. And then I'm actually not going to make it red. I'm going to go for a blue color scheme for this shot. So I'm going to go to the color wheels tab and then scroll down to this hue. And we can just change the hue so that you can pick any color you want the ball to be here. So I'm going to scroll up right like this, move it until that blue looks pretty good. Go back and grab that asset, Magic Spell 9. So now Magic Spell 9 is in the shot. So first of all, I shoot the beam from the right side to the left side. And the asset is left to right. So we're going to add the flipped effect. So flipped. 
and that's gonna make it a bit easier to line up. And now we just need to line up the timing of the composite in the shot. So let's see, when do I shoot the energy beam? So right about here. So this is when we need to make the start of the energy beam. So now the timing's good, we can trim the end. So go to the end and press option and then right bracket and that'll trim the end. Uh, adjust the transforms to line it up like that. We are gonna add some manual keyframes to reposition the energy beam, but for now that's good. And the beam already matches the ball. So we just, for the beam, we just need to change it to screen and it already should look great in terms of color. Now we just need to change the position. Uh, just go to the beginning, go to the position of the beam and press the keyframe on position. And then we're gonna go frame by frame and move it. We just need to do a couple frames at a time. So I'm gonna move that to the middle. And then now over here, just like this, I'm just going a couple frames at a time. We just wanna make sure this beginning lines up. The timing looks great. So now the final thing we can do to sell the shot is add the Motion VFX plugin M Flare 2. And this totally is gonna to sell this VFX. So start by getting an adjustment layer over the entire shot. You can get one, it's linked in the description. It's Motion VFX's free adjustment layer. And then I'm gonna go to the M Flare 2 effect. So I'm gonna look for which lens flare is gonna look best for this shot. I like to look at this Alien Spotlight one. So I'm gonna drag Alien Spotlight on the adjustment layer. And then I'm gonna line up the center of the lens flare over the energy orb. Move this down here. First of all, let's change it to three colors. This will just make it more simple in terms of color. I like it, it's at this blue, but as you can see, it almost looks super white if I zoom in. Can't even see any color on the lens flare, even though it's in this blue coloring right here. So I'm gonna scroll down. First of all, I'm gonna turn on the brightness a bit. We can adjust it later. Turn it down so you can see the actual orb still. And then I'm gonna go to the post effects tab, show, and then scroll down to saturation, where this can be turned up. Now it's a lot more blue. You'll see it when I zoom out. It's a lot more blue. I turn it up a bit, brightness. And so now I'm gonna go to the tracker and the M Flare 2 tracker is a lot better than the built-in Final Cut one. So it's gonna do a better job at tracking, especially you'll see, I'm gonna track the energy orb. So I'm just gonna line up the box over the orb and then click track. I'm gonna track it forward. See how it does with the shot. Because I didn't click at the very beginning of the shot, I'm also gonna click reverse and then track. So now let's see how the, the track did over the entire shot. If I play it, perfect. The lens flare looks like it's lined up over the entire thing. So now to spice up this lens flare a bit more, scroll down to animation and then the flicker. I'm gonna turn up the flicker speed a bunch. As you can see now, cause the energy orb also is doing a lot of animation inside of the actual composite. This lens flare now is flickering along with it. It looks a bit more realistic in terms of me holding it a ball of energy. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the brightness down a little bit more and then we're gonna rewatch the shot and see how it looks. Okay, I think it looks great right now. As you can see, without the lens flare, it looks a lot worse than actually with the lens flare. So if you're looking for a plugin for VFX, I really recommend the M Flare 2 plugin. It's down in the description. It's really gonna sell a lot of the effect. And now if we go back and watch our shot, your shot is complete. If you guys enjoyed this video, subscribe because we'll be making more Final Cut Pro tutorials similar to this one where we'll teach you how to do awesome VFX in Final Cut Pro. If you're in need of any professional video editing from corporate videos to VFX to social media, shoot us an email at rendereffectsteam at gmail.com. That would be absolutely awesome because we would love to work with you. If you're looking for another tutorial to watch right now, make sure to check out the Iron Man Blaster Effect. We'll put that on screen right here. And guys, we'll see you next week. Peace.